and, I, and it's a story that I always tell that I'll never forget. Um, this was 1990 something. It was it was during the Diallo verdict, and I remember uh, I remember the verdict vividly because uh, I was in the grand jury room at 360 Adams Street in Brooklyn, and I was indicting a case. And I remember as I was marshalling the evidence to the jurors that I heard a loud a roar and applause that was emanating from the uh, waiting room area in the grand jury room, which was consisted of police officers, witnesses, and district attorneys, colleagues of mine. And I was wondering what the applause and cla clapping was. And I got out of the grand jury and I went into this room and it was all these people who, I, some I liked, some I didn't like, but colleagues. A lot of colleagues that I did like. And they were all watching the screen, clapping at the not guilty verdict in the uh, Amadou Diallo case. That, um, it really weighed heavy on me. I ended up walking out. Um, I actually cried as I walked across the street from uh, 360 Adams to um, 350 J Street where our offices were because it was just a confirmation for me that um, it was reasonable for law enforcement to take a different approach to a young black male whether or not they were right or not and, um, and this was my colleagues who were prosecutors cheering defense attorneys which was an aberration, and um, you know it. it uh, and w which was that case for people who don't? Uh, this was Amadou um, Diallo was a young um, African man, very educated, working hard, job in this country. Someone's son, 21, 22, very young. I don't know how old he was. He might have been older. Who uh, had come out of his house and was shot up forty-one times, died. No drugs, no crime, and the officer's response was, he fit the description.